Welcome to another episode of the Don Mackey Podcast. Uh, I'm here today with Aaron Kobler, Director uh, of the uh, East Long Meadow Council on Aging, and to talk about uh, the dementia-friendly East Long Meadow. Aaron, thanks for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, this is great. It's I... so nice to finally be here. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about doing this for a while. Um, so I guess to start off, what does dementia-friendly East Long Meadow mean? Right. Well, as you were saying it, I was thinking, what a mouthful to have to say, right? Dementia-friendly East Long Meadow Initiative. Um, actually, what it is is a grassroots local effort to make East Long Meadow more friendly to people who are living with dementia or other cognitive impairment as well as their caregivers. So it's looking at different sectors in the community, educating people who come in contact with those um, with people who have dementia and their caregivers and giving them some tips and tricks to make it easier for those folks. So how significant is the distinction in the sort of framework of this initiative between dementia and a, a particular form of dementia, Alzheimer's disease? Because we hear a lot about Alzheimer's as sort of being the, the, in a way, the focus of everybody's attention. Absolutely. The Alzheimer's is... Alzheimer's Association has done a really good job of bringing Alzheimer's to the forefront in terms of talking about dementia. Um, but really, when you think about dementia, dementia is sort of the umbrella that is over other types of neurocognitive disorders that exist, such as um, frontotemporal dementia, Lewy body dementia, Parkinson's dementia, and Alzheimer's are just a few of the dementia diagnoses that you can have under that umbrella. So as a director of the senior center and what we have, East Long Meadow has a fairly significant senior population. Sure. And, and I guess, am I, am I wrong to say that when we're talking about dementia in general, we're talking about an older population? In general, we are, yeah. The, your risk for dementia increases as you age, although there is early onset dementia, and that seems to be growing, or maybe we're just, um, people are being um, diagnosed more frequently now. Um, but yes, your risk increases with okay. age. So if we have somewhere, you know, around 30% of the population in East Long Meadow being 60 and over, and and you were saying before we started that even in, in Western Mass in general has a, a fairly high percentage, high of, percentage of, of, of an older an population. An aging population, aging for sure. So, sure. Um, so it correlates, one would assume, that the, those that dementia is is part of that. What, in terms of your programming at the Council on Aging mm -hmm. on a daily basis, you do an incredible amount. <laughs> it's just incredible the amount of programming that you guys do. How much of that is cognizant of dementia as an issue in the people who frequent the senior center, use the senior center? Right. Um, we're thinking about the fact that there's going to be s at least one person at every program that we put on that has a mild dementia diagnosis, um, or at least some, some dementia going on. Um, the senior center is a place where people can go and feel safe and have so social interaction, and we really want people to feel comfortable there. And so um, we are very cognizant of making accommodations for people um, who may have some... Um, some disability or cognitive impairment, making it easier f for them to go about their daily, um, their day and to enjoy the programming that we put on. Right. And that's really the, the sort of thrust of this whole initiative is to sort of raise the level of awareness in the community as a whole that how to better address that issue in, you know, uh, places of business, yep. school, whatever, so that as people encounter dementia um, in in their customers or people who come for services or whatever, um, that that we as a community are better at understanding what that is and helping 
And helping. Right. Exactly. So that people can stay in the community longer. Right. Right. And they can feel empowered to stay in the community longer. Um, when we created an action team to look at moving forward with the Dementia Friendly Initiative, we made sure it included um, not only senior center um, employees, but also um, senior providers, as well as um, there's a bank that sits on our action team. Um, there is a care manager that sits on the action team. First responders sit on the action team. The superintendent of schools here, Gordon Smith, sits on our action team, um, the rec department, so that we're looking at how to bring um, this issue, because we know that people with dementia are living among us every day, um, to the forefront of all of what we do as a community. So. I, I let's back up a little bit sure. because I want to give you a chance to describe really how this initiative started and a little bit about the process. Um, what, pardon the pun, what initiated it and uh, and 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 your involvement in it? Sure. Um, so dementia friendly Massachusetts. Um, is an initiative that's funded by the Massachusetts Councils on Aging and Tufts Health Foundation. Massachusetts was one of the um, first adopting states that um, made it a priority for communities locally to become dementia friendly. And right now, there are about 150 communities in Massachusetts that are either designated as dementia friendly or are working on the on the designation. So it really is a statewide initiative, although it's happening at the grassroots level. Um, so the first thing we did was um, go to the town council and ask for a resolution for East Longmeadow to sort of take on the dementia friendly initiative. We needed to have their support um, to move forward and make sure that it's embedded in, in the community with their support. Um, we then formed an action team that I talked a little bit about before that represented sectors of the community, um, all sectors of the community. Mm -hmm. um, we had a kickoff in April that was very successful, very exciting, sort of motivated everybody. We had to push it off a little bit because of um, COVID surges at that at that time. We wanted to do it earlier. Um, and in fact, I think you know this initiative has had some fits and starts due to the fact that COVID was was still out there in the spring. <laughs> um, and so then the action team created a, um, an action plan. And so we've been working through our action plan through our education efforts. Um, next week, Wednesday, we are having a forum um, called Managing Dementia that will include a geriatrician, um, an elder law attorney, a care manager, and a caregiver from our community who will talk about um, different aspects of dementia, from the medical issues to um, caring for the for the caregivers. Um, we are also having a a town employee education session to be held October fourth. So, um, you know, we're working through the action plan to make sure that we're touching all sectors of of the community, and that's really what the Dementia Friendly Initiative is: is um, engaging each sector of the community in a way that. Um, really targets the way those sectors interact with somebody who might have dementia or their caregiver. Um, for example, you know, the hairdresser who is doing the hair of somebody every week who has her hair set and is listening to the same stories over and over and over again and stops addressing the person in the chair and is looking at her daughter instead. And so we want to help that hairdresser understand how to be patient with the person in her in her chair, make her feel comfortable, make her feel like that's a valuable experience that she can continue doing, um, you know, as long as she can stay in the community. Um, even in terms of, um, you know, say the town clerk, somebody's been paying their taxes every quarter for as long as they've lived here, 60 some years. Um, and then all of a sudden, the clerk sees that they pay their taxes twice within one week. You know, sort of what's happening here? Right. Um, and giving them the tools to check in on that household. So those are some of the things that we're trying to, to address to make East Longmeadow more dementia friendly. So you mentioned uh, the, tra the town employee training. You mentioned the, the, uh, the event uh, next week. What... What are some other events or, or things that you have planned uh, that would give people an opportunity to, per, to participate, to either come to an event or, 
or learn more kind of in, 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 a, in an event setting? Um, we are having a fall series in partnership with the library um, in September. They'll be holding Healthy Living for Your Brain and Body. That's September 19th at 630. Um, and then in October, we'll be back at the Pleasant View Senior Center with Understanding Alzheimer's and Dementia. That's Thursday, October 13th. Um, and then it goes forward from there, 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's at the library in November and effective communication strategies at Pleasant View um, in December. So we'd like, we're, our plan is to hold a dementia education series or program um, at least once a month at either the library or the senior center, um, wherever somebody feels comfortable at varying times of the day so that people can, can make time in their schedule to do so. Um, you can always call the senior center. Do I say the number? 413? 5 5 yes. <laughs> 525 um, Or email me at erin.kobler at gov to find out more about any of the dementia activities or dementia-friendly activities and programs um, that are going on. Uh, yeah. And just sort of generally, I mean, are there some tips? I think it's maybe difficult for people to have on any given day, the bank teller who sees 50 or 100 customers come into the bank, and um, when that one customer comes in, who's maybe comes across as problematic. Sure. Right? You don't, you're not, the first thing on your mind is, oh, I, I bet this person has dementia, and here are the three things that I'm supposed to remember to do. Right, right. But that's really the goal of the initiative is to a lot, give people in the business community, in the town hall, the tools to make that a little bit more, a little higher up in their thinking um, as, as these situations arise so that those people do not feel... Um, rejected or insulted or right because right right so are there some things that just in general that people that help people think about that or sort of tips to yes absolutely okay <laughs> i thought there might be uh, yeah sure <laughs> um of course and think about it sort of as um you know cpr for dementia or you know mental health first aid for people who might be in a mental health crisis right this is tips and tricks um in your specific sector um but that are um overarching um for every every different interaction to sort of you know back up first of all take a breath let things calm down a bit, be patient, speak in very short sentences, one sort of direction at a time. Um, look at people in the eye, really connect with them when you're trying to um, get a point across. Don't fight with people. Um, sometimes it's just sort of saying, you know, let me help you make make change or, you know, not, not hurry up and, you know, you need to get me the right change right away. It's, um, uh, I'm sorry, I have trouble seeing those nickels and quarters too, the difference between the two. Can I, can I help you with that? I do it all day long. Um, so it's really making the person feel less defensive um, and showing them that you're there to help and support support them. Sort of what to what to look for, you know, differences in terms of, you know, if if somebody's been a bank customer for 60 years and then all of a sudden they're coming to you like I can't I can't balance my checkbook anymore or, you know, can you can you help me with this and, you know, throwing down all of their mail and and bills and I think this happens to bank tellers quite often they yeah. they become sort of the the social worker of Correct. of finances um, you know to to have a relationship with people know who their contacts are start thinking about um, how to put somebody else that they, that a person a customer trusts on their bank account um, so that there is somebody to call that's right can help so one thing that comes to mind is 
I could certainly remember um, a time when people banked at the same bank mm. for 40 years, mm-hmm. 50 years, mm-hmm. and people knew the tellers yep. for 15, 20 years. Those relationships were sort of built into the way the culture and the community worked. Mm-hmm. That kind of consistency does not exist anymore, mm-hmm. which on two levels, that in itself makes it harder for the person who's struggling to sort of maintain some, some sense of consistency, of right? Sure. And it makes it hard for the individual behind the counter who's never, maybe never seen this person. I mean, every time I go into the bank, frankly, you know, you're seeing there's a new person. teller there, yeah. which yep. that's the reality of business now. Mm-hmm. So I guess what I was thinking as you were talking is at some level, isn't this just sort of basic human courtesy and decency? And, and yes, if those relationships are allowed to develop over a period of time, and that's sort of what we people think of when we think of East Long Meadow as a community. People think of relationships in those terms. That's right. But those are harder and harder to find because everything is transitory. Mm-hmm. So the value of the initiative to me is how do you how do you repair the severance that's happened in the in the fabric of those relationships in the community on a day-to-day basis for people people have lived in the same house if they've been here for 60 years they see all this stuff changing around them but there's a sense that it's supposed to stay the same Mm -hmm. and that the rules are the rules that they always were and when you're confronted even if you're not suffering from dementia, you go in, there's like, oh, there's another person here who I haven't seen before. Like, they're going to ask me for my ID now. I've got to get my wallet out. Scratch again. Start from scratch. That sort of tees everybody off. Sure, sure. So imagine what it's like for somebody who's already dealing with some degree of confusion about what's happening. Absolutely. Who is sort of relying on familiar routines, familiar people, familiar faces to really get through the day, right? And so I think you really hit on an important point. This is sort of a way to rebuild community, maybe in a in a different way, but through education and and using education to um, really create empathy, right? Because isn't that what it it is really what it's all Correct. about? Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, so people can. Um, Find all of this information on the Council on Aging. If you have your Facebook page. We have our Facebook page. It's a wealth of information. The newsletter is published online. Mm -hmm. So you can get or pick up a copy of the newsletter. Stop by the Senior Center. Uh, Also, for the programs that you will do in conjunction with or at the library, the library website will have all this information. Stop by the library. We will put any information about upcoming things on the LCAT bulletin board. And um, this is a this is a tremendous initiative. Thanks for coming in and sort of bringing us up to speed about really what's involved. I, it, I think it's I think it's tremendous. And I give you and your team at the COA a lot of credit for really pushing for this, because I can remember, you know, at those sort of council meetings when this first idea first came up and everybody kind of Having this quizzical look, well, what does that mean? Like, mm-hmm. what is that? Mm-hmm. Um, it is a very substantial and, and, and important initiative, and uh, I think it's I think it's great. I'm really I'm I'm proud of the uh, effort and um, determination that you all have put into this uh, on behalf of you know the town government and and what the, tra- what the town's role is to, to support this. So, Thanks, Don. It was so fun to be here. Um, and, and we really just hope that it makes life better um, for those 
East Long Meadow, Meadow, Meadow residents living with uh, dementia and their caregivers. And if anybody who's out there sort of that we haven't reached through our programming or our caregiver support group um, has questions or just would like to engage, please don't, um, don't hesitate to get in contact with us. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much, Aaron, for coming. Thank Aaron you. Kobler, Thank Director you. of the East Long Meadow Council on Aging. Uh, that'll do it for today. Thanks for listening in. This is Don Mackey with the Don Mackey Podcast, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Don.